From all around the world, an insanely devoted group of people gather for a two-week celebration that they've been waiting for all year long. I don't think any description can really prepare you for the scope of it. You hear it's 10,000 people, but you don't... It's a whole city. It's much more metropolitan than you think it's going to be, and it doesn't really feel much like camping. want to do at Penzik, whatever you want your focus to be, it can be that. There's people who spend their whole time visiting friends they don't see any other time of year. There's people who take classes all day. There's people who fight all day. There's people who sleep all day and socialize all night. It's whatever you want to do. But in order to understand the hype, we need a little history. After being formed at UC Berkeley in 1966, the Society for Creative Anachronism, or the SCA, grew into three major kingdoms, the West, the Middle, and the East. At that time, the King of the Middle, Karyadak the Bow, this guy, wanted some excitement. So, like the kings of old, he declared war on his neighbors to the East. The King of the East read the letters, filed them away, and basically just ignored them. As time passed, Karyadak the Bow moved to New York and subsequently became King of the East. Immediately, he removed the papers from his cabinet, his own papers that he sent, and said, let's fight. In 1972, the Pensic Wars began. The Middle won, giving Karyadak the distinction of being the only king to have declared war upon himself and lost. So. That's how this whole thing got started. Walking into Pensick, you'd never think that the event was once a small gathering of friends at school fighting with foam swords in between dorms and classrooms. Today, the scale of everything is intense. Other than being awestruck, we noticed that we stuck out in all sorts of ways. First off, we were loaded up with cameras that surely didn't exist in the Middle Ages. And making it even more obvious that we didn't fit in was our clothes. Seeing that we weren't going to ditch the camera gear, we tried to look the part as best we could. Luckily, Jana helped me out. I really am lost. She even gave me a period name. How about Henri? Henri? Henri. Henri. Bonjour. Je m'appelle Le Pamplemousse. <laughs> J'ai tombé et toi. So the fun thing is, I wish Jana speaks French, but I don't. <laughs> if you look around, there's a Japanese camp right here. In fact, the Pensick War Grounds has camps from all time periods and countries. 15th century Spaniards with Persians, Italian Renaissance with Huns. Every time period is represented together at the Pensick Wars. <laughs> Phoenix Dominatus! As our ride continued, we started to notice more signs of everyday life. At least what you'd think it would have been in the Middle Ages. Not everyone was suited up for battle, but as this is the Pensick War, the first thing I wanted to see was how people fight. So we met with some knights. Before the battle starts, before that cannon sounds, your, your heart is pounding so hard, I cannot imagine how much more intense it would have been in the real Middle Ages. The manuals tell us that I'm gonna have my buckler in a stance something like this. You can imagine I've got a shield about the size of a dinner plate on my left arm. And what I'm trying to do is control the center. Wherever she goes, I want to essentially make contact with my sword. And as I'm closing, I'm going to hand it off to my buckler. Mm -hmm. Whether I'm hacking, whether I'm thrusting, I'm dictating all of her motions. And if she brings it down like that, you can see where I'm going to hit her. In the staging area, we ran into a few more knights prepping for battle. The, the running joke is that the, a battle plan is only as good as till the till the battle actually starts, and then you never know. So, <laughs> yeah. a lot of people equate it kind of to achieving uh, a black belt in a martial art. Right. Uh, that of years and years of practice. I had been fighting for oh about eight or ten years before I got knighted. And I've been fighting for about fifteen or so before I got knighted. Throughout the entirety of the event, a master score is kept. At the end of the two weeks, the kingdom is declared winner of the Pensick War. The total points take into account teams' performances in big battles, 
castle raids, forest conflicts, throne events, and for those who don't want to be a part of the fighting, there are ways for them to contribute as well. Anybody in the society that can shoot a bow can participate and get points for their kingdom. Oh, so they have people shooting crossbows here? Yes. Oh, yes. Recurves, longbows, no compounds. Okay. Uh, all our arrows have to be made of wood mm -hmm. and use real feathers. Turns out, Dean is kind of a master archer. This year alone, he has scored countless points for the East Kingdom, making his talent a huge asset for its territory. 15, 20 points for the East. So that's pretty much archery. Archery, the scoring system, and the Pensick War itself has been around a decently long time. However, and not to undermine the age of the Pensick War, but this man has been around longer. I usually introduce myself to people by saying I was Crown Prince of the East at the First Pensick War. That is, I was sort of the number two man on the losing side of the First War. <laughs> oh, man. So, 47 Pensick Wars. Yes. What's been your favorite memory? Very difficult thing. I mean, there, there are lots of different kinds of memories. Broke in Middle Kingdom Bridge. Oh, long live the king. And all the middlemen rallied on the king and they beat us. They did uh, break in and slaughter us all. It was not to let anything prevent him from winning that crowd for his lady. And that was the end of the battle. Every one of the 20 kingdoms at Pensick have their own battle station. You follow me, Straight boys. I'll make a hole, I promise. It'll be this wide, and there'll be blood everywhere. <laughs> What's there? You like red. And I don't lose. Like any war in history, the battlefield at Pensick is a dangerous place. We wondered how the warriors protect themselves on the battlefield. Can you give me a run through of like everything you're wearing right uh, now? Yeah. Sneakers, not period, but comfortable in this way, I don't die. Um, ground protection, very important even in this. <laughs> I made that mistake once, never made it again. Oh. Um, you have to have coverage for your knees, your elbows, your neck, your groin, and your head. And after that, you can run out with whatever else you want to. Let well, me. fight right. well. Thank you. I'll catch you guys. If you don't come with armor of your own, you can fully equip yourself at the market. So there's going to be a little bit of spark slide. They kind of go everywhere, so I don't know if it's going to hit the front of your lens or not. Or is it? Okay. Just like that, both sides started to assemble. Warriors compiling to fight and spectators coming to cheer. The action was headed to the battlefield. While from the outside, the battle is a terrifying mess of weaponry, daunting warriors, and aggression. Being in the action, you can see an entirely different side of everything. Sorry about the last one. Excuse me. Hi! How you doing? 
You okay? Sorry. Get your hand up. Give him a second. Let me fix it. You good? Thank you. Through all of the battle lessons, they made it very clear that their main objective was not to try and kill the opposing teams. The most important thing for them was to have a safe and entertaining experience. Seeing the different armor, weapons, and fighting styles, we became aware that everyone is finding a different inspiration to embody a character of their own, and some got a little more in-depth than others. My persona is a late 16th century uh, sailor from Yarmouth in England, and that persona, picture in my mind, is what I use to filter all my other studies and things through. But I've always had a generalized love for the sea. This persona allows me to focus that. All of a sudden, the, the history parts of it become much more alive, much more connected to a living, breathing person, mm -hmm. me, than it does to just being pages on a book. And that is sort of like the magic that drives everybody out here and just answer to them. For me, it's the old ships. For other people, it's hitting people with sticks. There is sort of an unanswered passion in the rest of the world that they come here and fulfill. And just like that, one of my magic moments happened when we met with the king and queen of Ethelmark, the host kingdom of Pennsylvania. His Majesty, Her Majesty. Hi. Hi. <laughs> the play side is where we have the most power. Uh -huh. It's where we decide what's going on. If you're going to have a party on Thursday or on Friday, it's <laughs> up to us. <laughs> this has continued and become the tradition that you hold a, a crown tournament one on one. The winner of that day is the next king of that or queen, depending on if it's a he or she. With royalty playing such a large role in the SCA, the ceremonies are full of emotion. After all, many people have dedicated much of their lives to these moments. From an outside perspective, what's the strangest, like, unspoken rule? I don't know. Everything we do is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and very normal. <laughs> Cooper's Lake Campground hosts over 10,000 people at Pensick every single year. Historically, it's not quite the population of an actual medieval city, but it sure feels like it. So, to find out what it feels like to live here, we met with our new friends, Stephen and Estrita. This is our interpretation of what a 14th century uh, pavilion would have looked like. How did you guys meet each other? In I mean, to have in this? In this, yeah. I was in grad school. He was still an undergrad. And there was a student activity day. And, and I was like, that looks like fun. And he was a fighter. And uh, yeah, my phone rings one day. And, and, and he says, can I fight for your honor? And that was yeah, 30, that years, was 30 ago. years ago. And with those 30 years under their belt, they've built a very convincing and functional medieval house. Got a, a hand crank blender so we can do blender drinks. Oh you just put goodness. water in, you have your faucet. A box in which you put raw grains. It's hand-woven linen. It is 0.4 millimeters too long. This is a reproduction of a kind of sun hat that they had back then. Flip it upside down and use it as a bread bowl for kneading. This is based on a piece that is in as uh, Jean de Vauter presenting a Bible to Charles V of France. Do you want some water? Um, and we can document this particular knot that we use from manuscript illuminations from the 14th century. It's really an opportunity to understand it at a gut level that you can't get just from reading a book. With time moving farther from the medieval era, we wondered what the future of the Pensic War looks like. Organization around that event that is this big lives its own life. There's new generations coming and they will then bring their fresh ideas and, and how to do things and then try to change the ways of us older <laughs> Skadians. Because although we do have young people and we have some very enthusiastic young people, but I would like to see more enthusiastic young people. That's the critical thing. I kind of look at myself as one of the elder statesmen of the organization. I love seeing people like Beatrix come up through our ranks, achieve knighthood, and know that our organization is in good hands for the next 25 or 30 years.
From the hundreds of self-sufficient merchants to the number of kingdoms and sub-kingdoms, Pensic was shocking. And for sure, the Pensic War isn't for everyone. But for those who it is for, life surely wouldn't be the same without. If you'd like to see more, follow us on Patreon and find the full episode in the description. Also, what we really want to know, where should we go next? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe.